Hey guys, welcome back. So in this session, we're going to go high level through one of my scripts and we're going to use Museo Sumeo, which I did a couple of weeks ago now. Um, I'm posting on all my socials. Um, but we're going to go through this script and use it as a way of really developing this idea of computational thinking. And I wanted to really show you a little bit deeper about my process uh, because this is what's important to learn with grasshopper it's one thing follow along with tutorials so the actual specifics of how we actually i did this project um we are we're not going to delve into we're going to go this is a high level about one how i approached the scripting how i broke um the problem down into smaller elements and built that back up as a script and um maybe well, let's talk about a few of the techniques that go into it and um, you'll see in a second, but I've intentionally left the script, um, um, I'd call it unproduction level. Um, I'm not sure if that's the best way to describe it, but it's uh, at a level that I could not publish this work. Um, it is super messy and all over the place, but that was the, the point was I would leave it there so I could show you both sides of the equation. It's pointless showing you all the time very slick and finished pieces of scripting because then you don't see the process that goes into it. You don't appreciate the process that goes into it. Um, and all you're actually focusing on is techniques in Grasshopper. Whereas the idea of this is to show you a little bit more about process and that idea of computational thinking and what actually goes into projects like this. So I will switch over and this is Museo Sumea, which um, you will have seen. Um, I'll put this link below, but there's, um, yeah, there's a lot of really nice photos uh, from the architect and also some really nice um, uh, photos of the structure as they were, they were building this. Um, but just in very high level in terms of, you know, what I see when I, when I see a project like this is that, you know, we've got this beautiful form that's been tiled with hexagons. You know, that immediately is, you know, our first pieces of, um, you know, this, this is what we see. But, you know, underlying that, um, you know, if we were the, the detail of this is the hexagon panel. So if we take this away, what we're left with is this beautiful form um, where we have a profile at the top and we have a profile at the bottom and we are we're almost stretching a piece of fabric between them. That is that, you know, that that feels like how this piece that this form was created and then it was tiled. So we're going to follow a similar process um, in that we're we're going to create our top and bottom um, top and bottom profiles so we can define the shape and the size of the building. We're going to use them to define the actual form of the building. Um, so the surface in between those control curves, um, and then we will tile it with um, with hexagons. That is that is really the intention or that that is the the process as i see it and the most simple way to to do this so if we switch over to rhino we can take a look and like i said this is messy this is um this is the script <clears throat> as it is um and uh, i have I, I i have not at all um edited this in one way this is exactly how, how i left it after i which is which is bad practice you should really go back through this and um and neaten the script up and put it into this best practice working that we'll go through um you know straight away but i left it and um and i thought actually maybe it would be a good video to go through this and show you the process so um i purposefully just left this exactly as it was um i have the first thing i'm going to do is going to go through and delete all the stuff that's not necessary. So for instance, um, you know, when I make my animations, this is all the script for those. I don't really need those. Um, and if we're going through this high level, this is all over the place. Only my mind would know, you know, what all this is. And thankfully I can approximately remember what, what is actually going on. Um, there is a hell of a lot of paneling going on. So there's a lot of um, data dams and that's why a lot of things are unenabled because I don't want this updating all the time. Um, but if we take a look at the, um, uh, actually at the script itself or this first part, I'm going to show you those, uh, initial sections or those initial, um, uh, uh, you know, well, the, the, the initial breakdown that we just went through. Um, so let me turn off some layers as well. Um, these are my, ah, okay. Well, the first thing that I have on screen is my control curves. I actually just drew these in Rhino. Um, and I will, 
I looked at a lot of photos. I knew I was going to be using these control curves to define the size of the building. So I looked at a lot of photos and I really, and I really noticed that the first, uh, I'll make this a bit brighter. Um, I really noticed that the, the lower curve was essentially a radius square with um, a triangle on top. Um, and also the top one, and it was kind of rotating to a square at the top. So I really just looked at these photos in a lot more detail, uh, you know, and uh, I, I probably looked at some plans and that is what defines those curves. Um, there probably is a little bit more in it, um, to be honest, but that was what I saw and what I, what I generally started with. So these are referenced into Rhino. Um, we are, so I, I, first thing I'm going to do is highlight these sections. Um, but yeah, we have my our curves coming in and we said the first thing that we were going to do is create a surface between these. And, um, I'm using kangaroo for this. So this whole first section is about creating that form. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to group that together. This is, this is going to become subsections. Um, but for now, this is creating those curves and using kangaroo to relax the uh, the surface between them. Um, so if I, this is all turned off and it's not going, um, but if I just play this through, you can see that, yeah, we can relax this surface. We can stretch this surface like a fabric between these two curves. That was the idea. And what this does, we're, we're not into hexagons at the moment. What this does is it gives us this beautiful surface to work on. Um, that is uh that that we can then start to panelize using um some more processes so the next part of all of this is um it is is really what you know is that um however you'll see there are multiple sections defining um these uh you know how this tiling might work and actually what these are are tests I, tr this is something to do with planarizing. I was looking at and playing around with, so this can go. And I, I know, I, you know, just from, uh, you know, from memory that this is the actual section that I used, and this is a little bit on the end. So this section was doing something to do with planarize. This was an idea about, um, I don't know, vertex loads. I can't remember. Um, but they were, they were all experiments and the little experiments that were dotted around that, um, I tried a few things out with. Um, before I got to this one, which it gave me the best kind of paneling and tiling of those hexagons. So uh, I have a data dam here. There is some other wires that are all over the place. It's annoying. Um, ah, okay, this section. The output from Kangaroo is always going to be a mesh uh, because this is mesh, mesh, relaxation, mesh relaxation. So it's uh, we're going to be taking all these edges and equalizing them. Kangaroo is going to be doing a lot of like functions in the background to be able to, uh, you know, create this. But it's always going to output a mesh. But the 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 way I wanted to be able to work with this, I wanted to work with a surface. So I am I think I'm just sectioning this in a way, and um, oh, I can play this through. Yeah, I'm sectioning all this uh, to create some curves. I'm aligning them all and creating a surface between them. So I actually have a surface a NURB surface rather than a mesh. Uh, so that's what this section is doing. Okay, so we can group that. We know that there's a bit of post-processing on, um, on the kangaroo script. Uh, and then there is a whole load of um, kangaroo. Again, this is not a step-by-step -step walkthrough, um, but what I wanted to do was get a really nice even distribution of hexagons. So all of this section from here is kangaroo. Um, it's my second level of kangaroo. We're using kangaroo to create the surface first, and now we're using it to really nicely distribute those hexagons around. Um, this is some annoying color stuff. We don't need that. I can delete all um, of these. Uh, we're welding some um, edges together. And okay, this is this is this section is about flattening out. Um, so we're creating all our hexagonal panels, but I actually want them planar. Um, we are, so this yeah flattens them out. We are also, okay, this section is creating some frames um, and also creating some thickness um, to the um, to the surfaces um, that are the hexagons that we will create. And the finally, 
this is uh, oh okay this is randomizing them i wanted to put them in diff I, I was trying out different layers and different materials to get a cool effect so i'm like randomizing them putting them on different layers so super high level that is the um this is the script you know we we create our curves or we reference our curves and we create our services using kangaroo we are um creating a surface from this so we can work with um work with them actually this surface is not important at this point it's for something else back here ah uh, uh, okay so yeah then we we're using that mesh uh, to then align our hexagons and make our hexagon tiles um i will run this for you so but i just need to take the amount down um because uh the just essentially the amount of tiling that happens um, this is, it can get really heavy. So, um, so yeah, I have my, my script here. This is relaxing my mesh again, um, based on a tiling pattern. Um, this is, I, I haven't increased the density, so that's why this looks weird. Um, and then this is, uh, taking our hexagons and projecting them to the surface. So we always get flat hexagons. This was important as well. Uh, but in order to do that, I need it, uh, I need an actual surface, not a mesh. So that's what this translation's for. And then the last thing is just creating some um, some thickness, some panels, and um, and then outputting the uh, the sections. Uh, sorry, output in different materials, let's say. So I have one, two, three, four, five sections that are going to now be, um, I suppose, put into subsections. So I'm, what I'm going to do now, now we've done the high level, and you know, you've, you've seen how messy this was. Um, what I'm going to do is I am now going to run through this um, at fast speed. You, know, you can slow it down if you want. Um, but I'm going to run through this and um, put this into our best practice working, um, uh, and I suppose, workflow. So separating that, this out properly and laying this out into um, actual sections. So after all of that cleaning up and organizing, we end up with something like this. And you can really, I hope you can really see the difference in that this is now hyper-organized into sections. You know, all those few sections that we went through have now been broken down into subsections. So um, again, at high level, I click, I'll click through this. You know, we have, I always create global parameters. So these are parameters that are going to be um, repeated throughout the script um so you know and used in more than one place usually um all things that we're bringing in at the beginning so we've got the upper lower curve there's a loading point which uh, is for the first kangaroo um and the weight of that uh, we've got panel thicknesses and the density of the whole script of the the hexagonal paneling so these are global parameters they're going to help us in the interim you know we've got our initial mesh being created um, we have our first set of kangaroo goals. So uh, kangaroo works on a series of goals that are um, that are either cons well they're going to constrain our parameters of our meshes, um, and so we can add lots of these together to be able to create different um, uh, effects and behaviors. So you know I've I've got um, uh, an anchor force in here, which is um, making sure that everything like secures in one place to the top and bottom curves, the edge lengths are all going to try and get as small as possible of the mesh and there's a point load in there. So we build these goals that are now running through my kangaroo mesh relax. So, you know, that we, we just had this as one section, you know, when, when we went through it. Um, but actually there's a lot of subsections into this and it's a, it's an important point to make because, you know, if you, if I left my script, you know, in the previous version, super messy, it's very difficult to pick out these sections, you know, and I, I did this a couple of weeks ago, so I, it's still fairly fresh in my mind. Um, but if you leave it longer and longer and longer, it just gets it's impossible. And plus, if you're working with colleagues, 
and you're all working to some sort of standard like this um, that I can teach you in all my memberships and programs, um, it's much easier for to pick up people's work. It's also much easier easier to create, you know, kangaroo goals, you know, version two, and we could do different options and different ideas. You know, uh, our scripts become very um, modular, and we can plug things together and um, and ideate a lot easier with them. Whereas if we leave them messy, not a chance. It's going to be, you know, it'll be messy forever. Um, so yeah, this is our kangaroo mesh. Then we do uh, some uh, base surfacing and some base hexagons. Um, we've got our second kangaroo goals, which is all about um, optimizing the um, optimizing the hexagonal paneling. Um, so this all comes through to here, and this is what sets the density. Then we've got my um, the second kangaroo, which is uh, which is optimizing the hexagons. Uh, as I said, this all comes through to here. We create our um, hexagon hexagon outlines. This, in all honesty, could do with this could be done better. Um, I was working through this quite quickly. Um, I you know we could we could get a much more even distribution. Um, I just haven't tuned it so much. Uh, and then our last part, planar hexagons solid panels coming through to our previews. So that is, um, you know, that is a workflow, you know, when going, writing a script is you're halfway there. You have to, and some people do this as they're going along, uh, you know, so when they're happy with certain sections, they will best practice work like this and um, put it into this production and teamwork ready format. Um, others like me, I will wait to the end. Um, the I would say, or, or my opinion is that the messiness of Grasshopper is um, the messiness of Grasshopper is a feature. It allows us to be very creative, and like you saw at the beginning, when I had lots of different versions um, dotted around of this uh, of the first kangaroo um, relaxation, uh, or actually it was the paneling. But you know, I can try lots of things very quickly, and I can be messy, and Grasshopper helps me out a lot with that. Um, but we need to have this high level organization input at some point. If we don't move through to something like this um, and organize our scripts like this um, at some point, then we are going to lose knowledge, lose information, and re it's much harder to work in a, in a team. Um, so yeah, that high level organization is not part of Grasshopper. You know, it, it's a part of most coding languages but it's not part of Grasshopper. So you have to put that high level organization in. Um, the, the messiness is a feature to allow for very creative approaches to design, um, but the high level organization is something that we have to do afterwards. So that is my Museo Sumea script and the process I would go through from scripting it very roughly um, and that, uh, you know, breaking this down into a sequence of steps and moves um, all the way through to completing it um, and then going back through, going going in reverse, and uh, then creating my subsections, my sections and my subjects, subsections um, to create that high-level organization. If you can start working in Grasshopper like this, you will start getting very good very quickly. So um, I, would, uh, I would suggest practicing this. It comes with practice. So that is everything. If you have any questions, let me know. As usual, follow our channel if you're enjoying all this content. Uh, if you want to join our coaching and memberships, reach out. I'll uh, let you know all the details and we can get you signed up. Um, we teach all of this in my programs and a lot, 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 lot more. So reach out if you have any questions. Thanks very much, guys, and I will see you on the next session.